this is Lexi Nieto, voice of Tomo Aizawa from Tomo-chan is a Girl, and you're listening to Podcast Across Worlds, Hawaii's number one anime podcast. Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds, where we like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lekua Superfina. I am your co-host, Mikhail Casanova. And we're going to talk about Ushi no Yeah. You know, it's just one of those shows where it's like, I'm just going to say it. Maybe it's just because I'm not in the sphere, the hub, the whole shebang, shimmer, 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 I don't know, all that stuff. I don't hear this show talked about really outside of like legions. You know, I know he, he talks about it because he absolutely loves it. And, you know, one of his favorite shows out there. But outside of him, I don't hear anyone talk about it. I mean, I know Brandon, um, H, H, uh, Brandon H, or he, S, yeah, he talks about it. That first episode goes on a spectrum. Like, who's going to tell you the, the, what we went through on that spectrum? Because here's the thing when you like look at Oshi no Ko, you would think that it's, you know, like when I looked at the art, when I looked at the art, it looked very similar to My Dress Up Darling yes. or Girlfriend Girlfriend. So I'm thinking, okay, we're going to get a rom-com about, you know, a, a bubbly, you know, like a, a, about a Japanese idol. The thing that really just, when you watch that first episode, you go in with one expectation and it just gets blown. We don't even know where the story is going. That first episode, you thinking, oh, okay, it's going to be a 30 minute, you know, like a tip of 19 minute episode you know 30 minutes is actually 19 minutes and then you get like t- total 22 because you got to do the op and the ed anyways so you're thinking it's gonna be just you know another like typical show and then you watch it and it just takes you on the ride it's like marvel vs. capcom 2 is main thing i'm gonna take you for a ride dun, 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 dun. <laughs> But like it's just like one of those what we went on a ride because it just took us. And anyway, go ahead. We didn't realize how long that first episode was gonna be. And then we looked at each other and we were like, so much time passed. <laughs> so much was happening. <laughs> so much. I was like, oh, they're showing us a lot of stuff. Like I was having some suspicion that this was like a movie where they combine all the episodes together, especially a scene where they show a bunch of flashbacks. And I was like, oh no, was this it? I actually wanted to see the series. I wanted to see each individual sh- episode of the show. Episode. And, and it turned out it was a pilot episode. Yeah, and it's, it did a hell of a job like luring us in. But yeah, like we completely, because like when I looked it up, when I Googled it, it was like, oh, it's 11 episodes. And then we were watching it and I was like, man, this, this is, this is a long episode. And then it's like, a, it's like nearly a movie's length. It's like almost two hours, the first episode. And like, I was just like, whoa. And you have no idea what it's going to be about just from the beginning, because it's not even the main, main, main cast. And I say main, 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 because they're kind of main, but not really and <laughs> that's how it took you throughout the whole episode <laughs> so the the first episode okay so based off which going with what she said leading off of that the first episode did for like at least 25 minutes or so you were in the shoes of an adult guy who's a doctor and you know he's working with an idol who's pregnant and we're like under the impression because it's totally given off rom-com vibes, you know, him being in his, however old he is, thirties, twenties, I don't know. And she was 16. I was completely thinking, okay, this might be like, you know, uh, Higehiro. I was thinking it could be that. And then out of like, it starts, it, it, it's sneaky. It's a sneaky, it's a sneaky little bastard. Because what it does is it pulls you in, making you it okay. It's uh, I said this on one of the other episodes. I'm gonna say it on this one. It pulled a Kansas City shuffle. It made you look left, 
while everybody else is going right or why it went right. But because it kept showing the stalker guy, like it kept showing him, but it didn't give enough emphasis. It's like, I'm going to drop bread crumbs and then I'm going to walk away with the bag of food. And so like, I was like looking at that, but then I'm like over here, like, okay, but the doctor and I, which is the, the girl, the, the idol, I'm thinking they're going to become something because it gave off that vibe. But then I started remembering the synopsis and I'm like, well, okay, how we, how we getting here? Y'all presenting this. I'm eating this dish, eating good. I was I'm completely on board with the ship. I got the cap over here and I'm like, yo, ahoy mateys, let's go. I'm over here like all in eating good on this one. And then I'm seeing this and I'm like, I don't know how we get in here, but I like this. I'm fine with this. It's generic, but it's cute, you know, but I'm, I'm gonna go with it. And then it doesn't do that. It subverts my expectation fully, kills him. And then now b- going back and not trying to spoil nothing, but there's another character, which is a little girl he cared about. And they give the backstory on why he's the big fan of I, which like, at first you're thinking it's weird. And even the characters in it are mocking him. His nurse assistant is mocking him. Like it's creepy. Like you're, you know, you're a lollycon. And you know how we always make fun of the lollycon car- t- people in real life. So it's like, you're really like stuck there thinking that this right here is what it is. And then once you, he gets, you know, you know, they, they show the little girl and that kind of gives you a reason, uh, his way of connecting with her because he cared about her. He got attached. And you can tell he's kind of detached in life. I'm doing a whole character analysis here. But, you know, you get really caught up. And then it goes over here. So, like, you're looking at the little girl and it's like, how his connection and everything like that. And then you're like, okay, so then, all right. Where are we going with this? Like, with this little girl. Unless he's I'm doing that with hand motions. Hand I'm like, where are we going with this little Whack girl with him? Wax on, wax on. Yeah, Miss Miyagi shit. I'm just like, why are we over here looking at this little girl? And then we're over here looking at this stalker. And I'm like, where is this connection? What's happening? And then they kill the guy. I'm like, oh. And it just like threw you off because it's like you get really connected to the doctor guy. Yeah. And sympathetic. And it's like, this is like some this is like some domestic girlfriend level of abuse I'm getting. Domestic girlfriend, the manga, and then the abuse that, you know, that the mangaka gave all of us who read Domestic Girlfriend. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, F that ending. It was... It, You're going off topic. I'm going off topic, yes. I'm going off topic. Look, I'm, I'm on, I know, I'm on my whole rant. Anyways, but like, I was like, okay, he died. I'm like, I'm emotionally invested. And then we start building characters back up. He now he's a child. Well, bro, it's the part where he dies. He's looking at the stalker. The stalker's looking at him. Right? So it's like, has even more impact. And I wasn't expecting that. Were you expecting no. that? And then I was thinking, okay, so since he, since the stalker went to him as he was dying, did he see the face of the stalker? And then you're thinking, okay, he's going to try and look for the stalker when he's reborn as Ida's baby. But that didn't happen. So no. you, you forgot about the stalker. I didn't... No, no, in the story. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I was about to say, watching. Food. <laughs> <laughs> like, as you're watching, you forget about him because so much is happening. It's just hitting you. Like, the world building, the character building, mm-hmm. is just that good and there's nothing on right now in this season hell i don't really even think with the last season that has been as good as this is mm-hmm. i don't think we've had a show as good as oshinoko in i'm gonna say a decade Ooh, that's a long time there's what, been a lot of stuff okay, that's come what out vibes are you getting from oshinoko well that's the thing is it's it's not just a vibe. It's a wave existence of multiple vibes. Oh, so you're experiencing all kinds of frequencies. Some Zeno gears lore over here. <laughs> yes. So I'm like, <laughs> it's multiple things because you got the rom com wave. You got the the uh, isekai because it's a isekai without being an isekai but being an isekai. 
reincarnation supernatural yeah yeah right except he's not he's just brought back into the same world he was in mm-hmm. so he's reincarnated so okay you got your rom-com you got your isekai then you got your shonen oh yeah and then you've got your murder mystery yes then you got you just straight up comedy yes and it's like and you got some psychological stuff there too. It's like it, 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 it's just it's so much wrapped into one. All the dust specked off, bow put on top, and just given to us. And I'm like, why the fuck is nobody talking about this show? Oh, you know what it reminded <laughs> me of? On Netflix, Kotaro lives alone. Yes, that's what it reminds me of. Like the tone wise, where it's like lighthearted comedy, and all of a sudden it gets dark and it gets real, like it hits you hard in reality. It's like it makes you laugh and then makes you feel fucked up for laughing. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's true. It's like that one just hits so hard, but like, and then we never got a follow up to that. Yeah. The, mon- that- the manga, that manga for that show is still not even translated. Yo, all y'all who do scanlations. Y'all are lazy. Do your job. Scan like that. Anyway, <laughs> with this right here, I'm like, outside of Legions, shout out to the homie. Nobody is talking about this. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why? It's so good. Like, we heard all this about it, but like we, and again, I, I, I can't speak for you. I'm going to speak for myself. I got a bad habit of writing shit off because it looks kind of stanky. I looked at it and I completely broke it off. Are like, you being dismissive? I was being dismissive because I'm like, yo, this is just going to be another wrong con typical. It, it just, it is what it is. Hey, I look, I, we had this conversation last night. I said, look, you know, when we were watching, cause you know, outside of watching anime together, we watched the nasty, dirty, dirty together. Not, Hey, get your mind, not Pornhub, but we watched the Desperate Housewives. We watched Vanderpump Rules. And trashy reality shows. Trashy, dirty, dirty. Like I said, messy. It's messy. And I, you know, there's certain Vanderpump ones. Vanderpump Rules. Vanderpump Rules is good. I like Real Housewives of Atlanta. You know, shout out to Kenya Moore, girl. I see you. But like, but I'm married. But anyway. <laughs> You know, like, I like that, but I can't stand a New Jersey one. Them bitches is petty. But anyways, Baby Pump Rules, we were watching that, and, like, the main character, I don't know if y'all watched that or not, and we crossed the anime. We, like, what? I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, Tom. The focal point this season. You yeah, know, this every one. season, there's he's always, the like, the main character. He's, main, he's the flavor of the week. He is the story. Yeah. Okay. So we got him, right? So we're looking at him and he's with this girl for nearly a decade. And then, you know, they just wasn't getting it. He's losing his mojo. And then you got her best friend who ends up giving him back his mojo. He Mm -hmm. got his, he was the emperor, got his new groove back. And then I'm over (laughs) here like watching him. He's a good guy. This is a messed up situation. But then like. Okay, I lost the train of thought where I was going with that, but then I got it back anyway. So I was like, uh-huh. I was like looking at him, and I was saying to her, I was like, look, like sometimes you just got to be able to own up to him. You made a mistake. Be like, yeah, you know, I did it. I did it. It was wrong. And just own up to it. I <laughs> gave y'all all this unnecessary context to say that, yes, I wrote off Oshi no Ko. Because I thought that that was going to be generic and it looked like some other bullshit that we've seen. You know, when you're reading your scanlations and you got the mon one, the smut, and then you got this row over here. And I'm like, yeah. I just looked at this and it looks, eh, it's okay. I just was like that with this. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't, I don't think it's going to be anything. And then we, you know, going back to the story, the Vanderpump rules, watch it. I fucked with it. It's real good. But anyways, like, I said that dude, Matt, you know, or Tom, uh, where the hell Matt come from? Tom. Tom. You looking for common names, that's no, why. No, I said Matt popped in May. I don't know. But Tom, I said he had to just own up and say he was wrong. Me, I gotta say own up and say I was wrong because I was watching that uh, because I read it off and it just wasn't. <laughs> it, I was wrong for it. I'm watching it. I'm like, this is just, this is just, it pulls you in and just messes with you. It abuse. It's it's a it it's abuse. It is. <laughs> She's over here like, damn, you're animated. <laughs> I had a sense that it, there's going to be some variety in here. 
when I, the idol, is talking about how she loves being an idol. She's talking about how mm. it goes with life, love. But then she talks about there's lies behind the love. The more I lie, the more I'll give love. And I was like, yo, you went kind of dark there. And her eyes kind of like made that look where she's seeing off into a dark future. Like seeing the darkness of the entertainment industry. I was like, where is this going? Well, I mean, and that's the thing is like, it, it does so really well. And you know, you're starting to see like more mangaka and anime that are adapting this form of, you know, show don't tell. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's very, if you're understanding of Japanese culture or, or you know, uh, Eastern culture, a lot of things aren't just told to you. Right, you got to right. be able to read the character, read the room, read the situation and, and go from there. Yeah. And so like, you know, other shows, we could say like Anya in Spy Family does a lot of things where it's facial and like it's not said, but you can read from her body language what she's doing. And then in this with I, and this is how the show is able to quickly change tones, is that what it does is it'll have a, a situation like that where she's talking about love and not really knowing love and hoping that she can continue to tell the lie to eventually find, because that's the old saying, you lie enough, it becomes the truth. Yes. And it's kind of like an allegory of that. And so she feels like if she keeps lying about love, she's going to eventually find it. And so when it's going to these really, really dark, dank places, her eye, which is normally having a star, a shining star, brightly lit up, it's, it, gl it goes black and dark. And that's how you know that the, the mood has changed. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely brilliant. And the way, I, you know, from how it is in the manga to how they're animating this studio is great with the animation oh yeah and just being able to show the tone like that i'm like man i'm blown away by it not gonna lie i thought the whole sparkle in her eye was like a satire thing to like other idol anime right. idols and magical girls i thought i was making fun of that and i was like why because she was the only one who had stars in her eyes and then it just was used to showcase the little more sinister part. I was like, oh, I'm getting some like magical girl, uh, the dark one. I forget what it's called. I think it was called Magical Girl Company or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I do. I think that was what it is. But anyways, it's like, yikes. But I love it. It was really subtle too. Yeah, and, and, and that's one of the things with this show, uh, Oshinoko, is that it does really well with having an introspective look mm -hmm. on the entertainment industry as a whole. Yes. Like it's, it's a social commentary mm -hmm. on, you know, the idolatry of what we think it is and how we place these people on pedestals. Mm -hmm. And then it shows us the actual reality of the behind the scenes of how cruel this entertainment industry is and it's like it it's interesting because like we're as content creators you know as youtubers streamers as you know podcasters being in that public eye and how like you know th there's a certain i i, I want to say that i can't because it would be spoilers but there's a serious like a very serious situation that happens later on in the story about at a mid the, the midway to 75 percent point and it talks about how people will talk about a situation when it's quote-unquote relevant and then it will just go away and people don't care anymore right and right. it just shows like how us in this field in the form of entertainment things we do it can be talked about and popular, but we got to move on to the next thing. Otherwise, our level of relevancy. And it really just showcased how dire that is. Yeah. In my opinion. I, I know I'm kind of dominating this episode. I'm sorry. That's okay. I just, it's it's <laughs> just like, this goes just got me, especially like with the social commentary. It's just. I think it's because when you were told about this show by Legion's, it was explained that it you can relate to it as a content creator. 
And in this anime, you don't really get it until later on. And it really hits you hard because, especially with Mikkel, where he works with voice actors and he has done podcast episodes on his podcast with people in the industry. And the anime is just capturing many of those aspects in a matter of one or two episodes combined. Yeah, it, it's... um. I mean, I can completely relate to it because, like, there's even the parts where it's, like, with other characters in it that are in the entertainment industry and, like, how they're trying so hard and then it's, like, they can't make it. And then you get to see the commentary that people are saying both, mm -hmm. like, as, you know, the quote-unquote fans or the consumers of whatever medium and how they can be so critically harsh and troll like and not realize how damaging that is to someone oh yeah and even then you're you're also showing like the people in the industry and how the, the ugly nature of how, how they can be and as people who've been in this like i've been in it longer than you mm -hmm. and i've seen that aspect from all the angles and it's it's really something like anyone who's considering becoming you know or, or you know like a creator or an entertainer or getting into the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's way more than the glitz and glamour. And this show just really beautifully and tragically showcases it. I like how you said tragically, because you see some parts where the sacrifices, the doubt, the worry, the stress yeah. that was involved in the entertainment industry and we could relate to it yeah where it was like no gig no money <laughs> yeah no gig no money and then you you're seeing the other parts where it's like the you know the people backstabbing and you know every people being out for themselves well and not only that there's like a part where i where she's working they said that she was too cute and it's like she's working her butt off but then she's still not getting jobs. So it's like, what do you do? Yeah. You know, and it, it goes to show like when they talk about the po politics of it and it, like not in a political way, but in like the entertainment politics, you know, people scratching each other's backs. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I know a friend who knows a friend and it's, it's just, it, it just showcased it because I mean, you can work as hard as you, you want. And just still not make it in certain fields because, you know, the stars just don't line up. You may mm -hmm. not have that connection. You know, being content creators, there's like opportunities that we get passed up on. And, you know, we should be like case in point with Sega being out here in Hawaii for the Sonic Frontiers event. This is not me taking a shot at them, but this is just as an example. Mm -hmm. They come to Hawaii. They fly people from all over the world to hawaii for this event mm -hmm. for sonic frontiers mm -hmm. i'm literally at two islands away a 15 to 20 minute flight to big island from oahu and for whatever reason even with all the years that i've been working with sega mm -hmm. which has almost been the entirety of eight years of this career and content mm -hmm. creating mums the word yeah i get looked over not only me, but other Hawaii content creators get looked over and not get any invitation or opportunity to go to Big Island or even the ones on Big Island to attend this event. But people from England, from, yeah. you know, Ireland, all these other places in, in Europe, the Middle East, in Asia, South America you know, Canada get flown here. But we who are here who have busted our asses are ignored by Sega. It's <laughs> one of, and this show, it, it, you know, I, I'm just bringing it back, but this show showcases how messed up it is and hard work isn't always rewarded. But that doesn't mean that's 100% of the industry it does showcase that hard work does pay off and this anime built us up on that we're like yeah we're getting the rewards we're all high and then 
just makes another turn going through this roller coaster. Yeah. We went on another roller coaster without knowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It it <clears throat> Yeah, it 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 just went on one and it it's it is so good. You think one thing and then me is just like slick not nah, got you. Made you look. Yeah. I like mean as Mikhail says, what was it, Kansas? It, yes, uh, it, and this comes from the movie Lucky Number 11. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. I, I'm a big advocate for that movie. Uh, one of Bruce Willis's greatest movies, I would say. But, um, yeah, it's a Kansas City shuffle. It, ma- it makes everyone look left while you go right. And the show constantly does that. It constantly subverts your expectations of mm-hmm. what you think it is supposed to be and it's that deceptive lie which goes into the theme of the show yeah lying uh, you know to eventually get to a truth because it wants to get you comfortable thinking yeah this is what the anime is or this is what the manga story is Mm -hmm. and then it just subverts it and then here we are and it's just so beautifully done that I can't name a show other than Kotaro Lives Alone. And even then, it didn't go to the extremes that this one. Like, it kind of reminds me of the elite classroom, too, where everybody yeah. thinks they're there to be the elite, but it turns out there's this point <clears throat> system that kind of determines your future. Mm-hmm. And then it come, gets really dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it that one got really surprisingly dark. Where they went from or a classmate, you know, kind of making fun of the anime where everyone in the classroom becomes friends. They're going to go through a journey through the high school life. They're going to live their high school days, you know, good memories. But it turns out, not that <clears throat> you're dragging us down. Either we cut you off or you buck up and get better. <laughs> can we, can we like, and we did a pod episode about it. <laughs> we yeah, we did. You know, that was wow, that was a while ago. Yeah. We did that when we had the jank set up. <laughs> <laughs> we had one mic, you know, sitting at a kitchen counter talking and chopping it up. Yeah. Um, can we talk about how you know, and going with the various like waves that this show goes on, mm-hmm. the interest it I, I said this earlier, it's an introspective on the entertainment industry as a whole spectrum. What it talked about with anim- manga adaptations to anime. Oh, man. That was so deep. Yes. I think I think it really kind of hit me because we just did an episode with Caitlin. Um, Caitlin Glass, for those of y'all who don't know. Famous actor, Kami and Street Fighter, uh, Hitomi and uh, Escaflone. And Kodohi and Oran Host Club. She was was it Kodoka um from Skip Beat. Like she was Winry from and, uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah. So she's also It's crazy we know the the two leads for like <laughs> FMA. Anyway. <laughs> so she is the voice director for country row and she was talking about how they pick titles and then they need to do the dub production on the, on their side and so when we were watching uh this anime here where it did show that a mangaka's ah, manga got chosen to be adopted into a tv series it showcased the other part because we got the information when a manga becomes an anime but then they're showing us when from the mangaka's uh, perspective, yeah, and it's like, oh yeah, they're super happy that it's being adapted into a live action series, but there's also a downside, yeah, as a artist, yeah, because a lot of your stuff just get, gets cut out, um, and it showcases it, like being for like ratings and all this yeah, other it's stuff, supposed to be like a promo for celebrities, yeah. And- they condense like a full on series multiple volumes into six episodes i think yeah like they cut out a lot and so all her hard work yay it got adapted into a live action tv series but like oh my my story yeah the story that i worked so hard on is being just shredded 
Yeah. And being used for someone else's benefits, like all that hard work was used as a stepping stone. Yeah. It, it, it really, it really dove in deep with that. And I'm, yeah. And then on, on another side, there's an actual actor who loves the story, wants to live up to his expectations, wants to do the mangaka <laughs> proud, but her work and effort was also unappreciated. You know what that actually draws parallels to? What? In real life. Henry Cavill with The Witcher. Oh, yeah. Because in that whole situation, he fought so hard to make The Witcher stay true to the source material because mm -hmm. he's a fan mm -hmm. of The Witcher. Witcher. And the, the producers, directors, and all that, they didn't care about the story of The Witcher. They wanted to do their own things, mm -hmm. which is why if you're a fan of The Witcher franchise or the Hexer if you're in Europe, um, it, the show takes a lot of liberties, mm -hmm. even though it is technically canonical to the books and by proxy the games, it is still trying to go its own direction. And that's unfortunate because it's like, it, it respect the author's work and it mm -hmm. just goes to show there's that disconnect where people don't care about the author's intent. And when that's another thing that it dives into, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, being able to feel what the author's intent is. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole like part where like you've got uh, him talking about it mm -hmm. when he was like a toddler or, you know, uh, precious baby as the director but calls. It's be a precocious baby because it, it looked like it changed into precocious at one yeah, point. Yeah, it, it, it did. It went from precious to precocious. <laughs> <laughs> but like it goes into the, you know when he was a kid talking about it and then they also showcase uh i think the sister also go, thinking about that too like talking about being able to, to understand without directing yes yes, yes you yes, know yes. the the actor author's intent and the girl who's a skilled actor child prodigy that got turned washed up she talks about that too so it it's crazy how like things that we you know we can tangibly understand gets shown in like the case. Like I said, the example, Henry Cavill, the Witcher, then he gets yeeted off because mm -hmm. they don't like him. Then the politics come into mm -hmm. play and it showcased like with a girl who was very good at acting. And, you know, she, even though she had an ego problem, people started to not like her. So mm -hmm. opportunities started drying up. And same thing with Henry Cavill, who's just very passionate about the Witcher. Then they got him yeeted off. And then you got the, the lesser Himesworth that's going to play. Garol going forward. <laughs> hey, he ain't Thor, so we don't care no more. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> you can tell he's upset with the Witcher. <laughs> I am. I am. I am. Upset with DC too, because Henry Cavill is like probably the best. Um I say he's probably the best Superman we've had. He's believable. Yeah. Christopher Reed. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And then in Oshina Ko, this anime, we just went up to episode four. Yeah. And it just hit us in all kinds of feels. We could relate to it in so many ways. And we don't know what's going to happen next. It's like... I, I really genuinely cannot say the last time I watched an anime or read a manga where I did not know where it was going. Yeah, and it was just complete suspense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. Like, and it just it and like again, not to spoil it, but like going back to the whole topic of how it subverts your expectations. Who you think the main character is is not the main character, right? The one that they're constantly showing you may or may not be the main character. You just, I love it. And each episode shifts around, so there's no central focus on any particular character. Yep. Because it shifts, and you get to see everyone's perspective. That's you know, even NPC characters that may not play into the overall plot, mm -hmm. they're thrown in. You're given their perspective because, again, this goes back to me saying this is a, a a social commentary on the entertainment industry, particularly how bad Japan's is. Mm. So, uh, I. I'm excited and anticipating who else they're going to introduce and what other aspects they're going to show yeah. in the entertainment industry. And it it kind of feels like they're exposing them in a way. Yeah. And it's and when I say exposing, I mean it's showcasing without really tattling on them. 
I mean, it even goes so far as to give you the, the backstory and, or the inside scoops of how idols are created, how they have a central person and then they form a group around mm-hmm. them. Like, it's just, it's it's going there. Or even how agencies work. Yes. That yeah. was interesting because there's like a part where they said like, we're having trouble <laughs> finding people. And it's like, wow, you guys made it look like it's so easy. You just find people, make a group and bam, done. Yeah, but they're like showing the actual struggles behind it. Like there's time and work that happened before anything started. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're like, dang. <laughs> I mean, for real though, it's it's just if you haven't watched Oshinoko or if you wrote it off like my stupid ass did before, yeah. thinking mm-hmm. it is what it is. Shush, you can't say nothing because you didn't watch it either. It, it completely. I, yeah, I had to throw my shade. Anyway, since he look at she cutting me stink eye. See, a sideways look. I see it. Anyways, um, it was worth it making us get high dive. I yeah. mean, that's a whole backstory. We, we were looking for Oceanical and we found out it was on high dive, which we don't have. We never had it. We never needed it because everything we wanted to watch was like on everything else we had, which was Crunchyroll, Funimation, Hulu, Netflix. Like yeah. we had them. <laughs> and it, it said like it was supposed to be on Disney Plus. So we went and bought, we just bought Disney Plus to get it. But it's coming on Disney and Plus. Apparently, it's not yeah. There. Yeah, apparently but it's not there. And it's like that. We finally got high dive and. This has made us a believer yeah. that High Dive has some quality anime in there that we have not had the opportunity to be exposed to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's cheap. It's only about five bucks a month. Yeah. That's not bad. And not I'll, bad. I'll say this. Um, TV makers and console makers, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo, y'all need to put High Dive on your... Um, your app, too. Yeah. <laughs> or High Dive. Y'all we- need to... <laughs> like hard and you end up up to doing comcast i mean for real yeah we had to uh, Google cast, was it like? we had to do the chromecast from the pixel to the smart tv to be able to watch it on the tv because i mean which is kind of crazy that tv is from vizio how you got every app but crunchyroll <laughs> the one thing we really want to be on y'all got funimation but not crunchy Mo- yeah, funimation they, don't even they had anime retro and yeah and, and, and retro crush right so it's like y'all got all that, but y'all ain't got Crunchyroll. Funimation ain't even a singular entity anymore. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah. <laughs> it is weird. But you know what? It was worth it. That five bucks was made by some good stuff. Yeah. So anybody who has recommendations of anime that's on High Dive, please let us know. Yes. Yes. So wherever you're listening and watching, we are available on all podcast platforms, either in audio or video. The names of them are our Apple Podcasts. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. I'll do okay. It. I was yeah. trying. Was like, trying. I, I will attempt to do this part. <laughs> All right, so you'll be able to catch the podcast across the world on all the major podcasting platforms. If you're on whatever your favorite platform, you know, we got it on Apple Podcasts, we got it on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Pandora. It's also available on Spotify in video and audio format. And we're on Amazon for all you Amazon Prime members. Check us out, Podcasts Across Worlds. It's available on, Al- on Amazon Music. I almost said Apple Music, but we can <laughs> you can find us over there too. We're also on YouTube. And since, and I go ahead and announce this, since this is... You know, YouTube now has the capability of podcasting. We now appear on YouTube Music, which gets broadcasted across the world. All 4.6 billion people on the planet, regardless of whether they got internet, mm-hmm. water, clothing, mm-hmm. or electricity, mm-hmm. is broadcasted to them. So you can catch us everywhere on this planet on YouTube <laughs> and on YouTube Music. So, all that being said, uh, let us know if you're watching the YouTube version of this. Leave a comment. Leave a uh, you know share it with someone. 
and tell us what you'd like, you know, suggestions and become patrons. Cause if you enjoy this type of content, your support really greatly goes and, and also listen to the audio version as well and leave a rating. Cause it helps us out with the algorithm. You know, mm-hmm. we're, you know, we are the IRL FYP. i just wanted to see her big a laugh but anyways you want us to show up in your feed because all these social media platforms have for you page then yeah interact and you know let them know and speaking of social media you can find me at lehua superfina on almost every social media platform except for snapchat that one i don't know what it is (laughs) and you know, we also have our clips and streams on TikTok too. So don't forget to follow us there at like who is super fan and at Mikhail Casanova. Yeah. So my social media platforms are the same thing across the board. Wherever you can find a platform, I'm probably there. And um, yeah, it just uh, definitely, you know, follow us there and uh, yeah, leave comments, ratings and all that good stuff. <laughs> Well, everybody, thank you all for listening to this episode. Keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next one. Ahoy ho. Thank you for listening to podcasts across worlds. This is a passion project that was created by Lehua Superfina and is co-hosted by myself, Mikhail Casanova. If you enjoyed this episode and any of the topics that we talk about or any of the guests and voice actors and various people we have on the show, then make sure you do us a solid by if you're watching it on YouTube, which is on youtube.com slash Lehua Superfina then make sure you like the video, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, as well as leave a comment on what you think could be improved or what you liked, what you didn't like, and all that in between. If you're listening to the show on any of the major podcasting outlets, such as Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any of the others, then make sure you leave a rating, leave a comment, interact with the polls that we put out, and so much more. If you want to support the show, we do have Patreon, as well as many other methods for supporting. And with that being said, we're signing out. We hope you enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Keep listening, keep watching, and keep enjoying podcasts across worlds. We'll see you around.